Hey, this video is brought to you by Cloudways. Cloudways is a fast and reliable managed hosting solution for your PHP and JavaScript apps. I use them personally. I've used them for years for both uh, Laravel, WordPress sites, JavaScript sites, uh, for my personal sites, for client sites. I, I really have nothing but good things to say about Cloudways. They offer five hosting providers. They put their management uh, dashboard on top. Their pricing is reasonable. So if you're looking for a really great managed host for your projects, I highly, highly recommend Cloudways. You can check them out using the link in the description below. So this is gonna be part of a larger user management system video, but it actually turned into a bit of an adventure. I was kind of surprised how complicated things have gotten <laughs> since the move to Vite compared to the mixed days. So what I wanna cover in this video is setting up a Vite Inertia Laravel application because I never intended for this to be a video, but it, it's, a, it's a lengthy process and I figured it's worth showing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just spin up a new app. I'm just gonna call it Vite Demo so it's simple. And I'm gonna CD into that. Okay, I'm gonna do valet link because I'm on a Mac, that's what I use. Valet secure, this is gonna ask for my password probably, yep. Okay, I'm gonna open this up in the editor. And make sure it's visible. So the first thing I need to do, and this is just strictly because I use Valet, and I discovered this in the documentation here. If you search Valet, there's a, a little warning that if you're using Valet and it's secured, meaning there's a, a TLS certificate generated, you're gonna wanna include Valet TLS in the vite.config.js file. And <clears throat> this is included with every fresh application now running Vite. So, you want to add this to the Laravel plugin and you want to use your domain, mine being, I believe, vite-demo. So technically, if I go in the browser now and go HTTPS vite-demo.test, I should see, after accepting this, the typical Laravel application. Now this is being loaded, uh, this is the welcome page that's built with Blade. Uh, there's nothing inertia about this uh, Laravel application yet. Um, but this is the, the first stage of just setting up Valet. And now, uh, while we're in this documentation, there's an interesting part here on View. Now, I'm going to be using View, and it's recommended that you include the View plugin. Uh, otherwise, things won't work correctly. And one of the interesting bits about this is you have to import this VJS helper package and you don't actually have this installed and I don't have view installed either so let's do that first npmi view get that installed and then do npmi uh, of the helper so we're gonna have both those great so we're actually done with this file we don't need anything else just remember to set your valet TLS if you're using valet and also include the view plugin if you're using view now, uh, we can actually start installing Inertia. So if I go to server side here, we'll do server side first. We're gonna composer install the Inertia JS uh, package. And the first thing it's gonna ask you to do after the installation is to create a main root template. And just by convention, and this is what we do at work, but this is also, also commonly what you see used elsewhere. Uh, there's going to be in your resources slash views a app.blade.php file. And that's going to be treated as the entry point. So you're going to want to copy this here. And we're going to change it, but uh, most of it's fine. Go to resources, views, and new file, app.blade.php. Totally misspelled that. And we want to paste this in. One of the problems with uh, this whole process right now is that the inertia docs are out of date. They're using mix. What we really want to do is use at vite and uh, pass in an array with two elements because we've got two here. So first one's going to be this. Second one is going to be the JS one. And one thing to note is that they should have resources. They should have the full path here. And actually we might not need this. Yep, this is fine. So we can actually remove these. These are not needed. And for now, the app.blade.php file is fine. We can continue on through the process here. We're gonna to wanna to generate the handle inertia requests middleware. That's done by running this command. Once we open this, uh, if you're new to inertia, this is basically where you're gonna pass in globally available data from PHP. Uh, very useful, we use it a lot. Um, so the only thing you have to note is that just publishing this uh, middleware is not enough. 
you need to go into your HTTP slash kernel. So that would you have to find your web array and make this the last element. It's very important that it's the last element. The doc documentation specifically requests that. And the last bit is creating responses, but we'll get back to this because we still have to install the client side. So I'm using Vue 3, and for the sake of this video, I can prove that, 3.2.45. So I'm going to use the Vue 3 uh, inertia adapter. Get that installed. And the next part is going to be initialize app. So if you're new to this, you have to initialize Vue, but you have, when you're using inertia, you want to iner actually initialize inertia, which will initialize uh, view by the looks of it. So uh, the only problem here, just like the app.blade.php file, is that this is not accurate anymore. One of the lucky things we have here is that if I search inertia here, there's a section where they provide the exact thing you need. So if we go to app.js, and there's going to be some bootstrap stuff in there, but we don't need it. Paste this in. And all these links will be in the description below, so don't rush. Um, the only difference between this and what Inertia uh, recommends for a uh, mix setup is how the pages are resolved. So because there's some conflicts with Vite, uh, there has to be a helper for resolving the page component. And we're, we're going to be resolving everything in the pages directory. And this is actually starting at resources. So your pages will be, for example, if you wanted a user's index, you would make it resources slash JS slash pages slash users slash index. But of course, I'll show you that. So... Uh, all you need to know is that copying this in for now, this is enough and uh, your pages should be resolved. Okay, what else do we have in here? We don't need to do this. Uh, we can install a progress indicator. So because requests are XHR, they're all XHR based for inertia, uh, you can't really do progress bars uh, unless you install this. Uh, it's great that this is an option and you just have to copy this. Go to your app.js, app paste the import in, and I'm going to organize this a bit. So that's it. And you can actually use the, the progress bars now. And we're not interested in code splitting. Uh, this is more uh, niche stuff, but um, we can actually go now back to the server side, like I said, and make our first request. So I'm gonna copy this. And we're gonna go to our web file because there's no point in me creating a controller for this video. It's pretty simple. Like I said, we're going to make a users index. It's not actually going to show users because this is more of a, a setup video. I'm going to want to make sure inertia is imported and that's use inertia slash inertia. And for here, I'm just going to pass in my name just for demo purposes. So David. Now we never created users slash index. And uh, this is what I was mentioning before. We're going to go into JS resources slash JS and make a new pages directory and then a new users directory and then an index.view and I have a very very basic view component here ready to go and now in theory we can do npmi and oh, pmi and npm run dev uh, npm run dev with vite in the in the default configuration is kind of like run watch so we got vite demo go take a look uh, actually first if you look here there's a little vite page that it's going to warn you about obviously but so you got this little vite page which is pretty cool and you can now click vite demo dot test and i'll enlarge this because obviously it's not very big, but you can see test comes up, which means view is being loaded. And as well, um, it's saying Vue.js is detected on this page. Everything's fine. But to prove that inertia data is being passed down, what I can do is uh, open up, while well, I have the index.view open, because we're passing my name as a prop, I can go ahead and make this first two spaces, add props. Do name string, and we could do hey name, and it should show hey David when we go back because it's going to auto re reload. Oh, never mind, it didn't. But it says hey David, so that works. Data is being passed down, which is great. Um, the last thing I wanted to show, which is a really important part, is Ziggy. 
So one of the issues is if you have another route, right? If you get route get second link for whatever reason, if this is a thing, right? And this returns second link. And this has a name of second. You definitely want to use names on your route to go around your app. You don't want to be just using hard-coded links. That's a, a disaster in the making, right? So there's no easy way to do this without something called Ziggy, uh, built by the wonderful people at Titan. So we got Ziggy by Titan. It's a very cool little helper. You just go to the installation here. Uh, it's a composer require. So it's a composer package. Let me open up a new tab, get that installed. And uh, add the at routes blade directive to your main layout before your application's JavaScript and the route helper function will now be available globally. Okay, so let's do that. So we our main entry point as an inertia application is app.blade.php. Our JavaScript is uh, our JavaScript is uh, rendered right here. I don't know if rendered is the right term, but that's where it is. So we're going to put routes there. And now you'd think this would work, but not that's not the case. Because we're using inertia, we have to pass it in through the app.js. We're lucky though, because if we are using, if we're in this, in this file here, we can pass in something called a mixin, which is like a, a globally available function. And we can call this, we can add methods. So make these methods globally available. This, and just make this route. So the route function that they're saying is globally available for use is actually being passed in right here because it's available here. And because we're making it a mixin, it'll be globally available within our templates. So if we go back to index and we make an a tag, add an href and use the route mixin helper and use the second. Remember, second is the name of the route here, right? Use second, close off the a tag, and just say go to second page. Let's go back to our site, go to our second page, click it, and it shows second link. And so links now work even to named routes. This is pretty much all you need to build an, a really great uh, application uh, from, from basically start to end. Now you might want to add some other little things. You're going to want to style maybe Tailwind. Maybe you want to set up the server side. I think there's server side rendering. Yeah, server side rendering. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can you can use with uh, with inertia, and I think that this brings us to the end of the tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing. I make these videos for fun, and uh, if you have any topics that you would like covered, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.